Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar John Ministries. I'm Pastor John Berg, Vicar John, and this is our weekly worship service. And I thank you for joining us this week and taking some time off your busy schedules and, uh, and taking time for Jesus Christ, uh, which we all need to do at all times. Uh, pray continuously as I say, you remember? Uh, anyway, so... Uh, our announcements this week are the same. You can find us on YouTube and, and uh, Facebook under Vicar John. Our website is vicarjohn.com. And you go to the top line of your browser, should take you right there. Uh, we can also pause at any time during the worship time to play some music, which is so important to so many people for, for a worship, true worship experience. And uh, so you do that anytime you want. And uh, some suggestions are sanctuary for one, uh, wonderful words of life, another one, an onward Christian soldier uh, is, a, is a third one. And any others that you like, you feel free to just go right ahead and play them. Uh, uh, so that's what we'll do. And also in a moment, we're going to stop for a moment of prayer. And I'll ask you to push the pause button again and go into a time of prayer. Uh, and so uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, our title for today is Your Backfire for your safety uh, and uh, so so we're going to be talking about that and you'll find out in a moment but first of all we'll have the ringing in the hour worship Let us open with a word of prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we love you, Lord. And we just ask that you anoint us today with the Holy Spirit, that we can worship you and only you. And if there's any bad spirits, we ask that you cast them out. Cast them away from us. Cast them out of our lives. We thank you that we can always come to you like this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, as I said, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about safety this week. Our title is Your Backfire, To Be Safe, uh, and Not To Be Sorry. But some safety, uh, some uh, good uh, uh, v verses on this. What, uh, the, uh, I'm tongue-tied here. I can't even get the word safety out for some reason. Anyway, Psalm 4.8 will uh, get us going there. And it says, I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone O lord make me dwell in safety uh, our second uh, verse comes from uh, second thessalonians uh, 3 3 which says but the lord is faithful and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one He'll protect you, okay? And the third one comes from 2 Timothy uh, 4.18, which says, The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord for, for these wonderful verses, and there's many more. Uh, if you need some help, if you're something getting you down and you just don't know where to look, I suggest you go on the internet and type in the word scriptures for safety, scriptures for love, anything, and it'll just take you, and it's just... Uh, uh, it's, it's just so many of them and, and uh, you'll be surprised and you'll you'll be enthused too so anyway uh let's uh our thought for the week this week is never test the depth of the water with both feet never test the depth of the water with both feet hmm why saying there okay uh our call to worship today comes from psalm 80 uh, verses 17 through 19. Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand, the son of man you have raised up for yourself. Then we will not turn from you. Revive us and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. We may be saved. What wonderful words that is. Uh, so let's uh, remember that, that we uh, are saved. And if you're not, we'll get into that here in a, in a few moments. Uh, to, we're, now we go into our prayer time and our God moments. And don't forget that God is with you every second of the day. So acknowledge him on your mind and say thank you or or. or praise you or whatever comes to your mind about what's good is, is happening to you uh it comes from god so just just, just remember that uh, so let's go into our time of prayer and then we'll uh 
we'll uh, uh, pause uh, in a moment here at the end of this and, and uh, you can go into your own personal prayer time. So pray with me. A wonderful maker of all and author of love, we praise you for the love you offer us that is beyond our comprehension. We just thank you for that. We ask that you help us to understand the difficulties in this life as we look at them from your eyes. We thank you for always being with us as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please push the pause button. Gracious Lord, we, we thank you so much for all that you do, Lord, and, and, and the, the things that uh, are wonderful in our lives, Lord, come from you. And we just thank you for that. Uh, we thank you for showing us the way. We, we thank you for, for all the things you give us. And today we ask for a little extra helping of self-control, Lord. It's, it's uh, one of those uh, uh, gifts that uh, we just never seem to have enough of, Lord. And it's in, the, in this world that we live in, this world that's basically a bunch of lies and, and innuendos and falsehoods, Lord, we need self-control. And help us to, to have that as we, we look to you in all things and help us to demonstrate this to other people too so that they may see uh, who you are lord we just uh, uh, today we ask uh, we hold up some people we ask uh, that you bless them in ways that are pleasing to you we're thinking of the hurting and poor once again uh, they're always with us we're thinking of our leaders lord uh, who have gone so far off the rails lord just help them to come back help them to know you we ask that you be with our troops wherever they may be we ask that you uh be with our communities, Lord, as, as we are coming towards the end of summer and things are, are starting to change again, Lord. And we just thank you for all these wonderful seasons we have. And we praise you for them too, Lord. Uh, we, Lord, we, we know that you love us. We know that there are many more people on our minds, Lord, that we need that need prayers. And we ask that you uh, uh, just... Uh, uh, anoint them in, in ways that are pleasing to you. Heal them, help them, whatever, Lord. Uh, just uh, please do that, Lord. Lord, we, we thank you for all this that you give us, and we praise you, Lord, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our reading today, our scripture reading today, comes from Luke 12, 49 through 56. Let's have a look at that one. Okay, we're going to take a little look at Luke here, the last couple weeks, and uh, that, this is good. So 49 through 56. I have come, this is Jesus talking now, I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it was already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and it, how distressed I am until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided against uh, divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say it's going to rain. And it does. And, and when you see the south wind blows, you say it's going to be hot. And it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? The words of God for the people of God and all God's people said, praise be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you once again and we ask that the words of my mouth be your words and they fall upon open ears and minds and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like... Uh, to begin today with a question that you all pretty much know the answer because you have to live with yourself. Are you an optimist 
or a pessimist? Uh, are you a person who never looks uh, down at the, at the downside of a project and only the positive and you are sure that that project is going to succeed or do you only look at the negative side and always project failure? You probably don't know me that well, and, and I, but I would say that I'm an optimist. Uh, I'm the ki type of person that would say if there's a 50% chance of rain or nasty weather, I say, let's go camping, right? Uh, it's a good chance that it won't rain. Uh, my children will bear this out. Uh, on the downside of this is that, of course, 50% of the time, We've had rain and we've had to sit in the tent or camper and find other things to do. Uh, that is just uh, the way I'm wired and I can't do anything about it. Uh, since I've come to know Jesus Christ as my personal savior, I have become even more optimistic. After all, we have the most powerful, and most loving figure in the universe in the universe who wants to be my friend, wants to be our friend, your friend, and give us the things that we need. Uh, how can we go wrong with a deal like that? Uh, today, we're gonna look at a very troubling passage uh, from Luke where Jesus tells us a few things that we probably don't want to hear, or don't like to hear. Let's see if we can understand this passage a little better in the way that God intended so that we will have, it will be good news for us. Uh, for, for some, it might not be such good news and, and uh, we should study it anyway. Um, Lou Little tells, uh, who uh, was a football coach at Columbia University, tells a story about a guy in the squad who didn't play very well, but he had the spirit, he had wonderful spirit uh, and, and that just lifted everyone in the team up. Uh, the coach was proud of this boy and marveled how he and his father would walk arm in arm around the campus uh, together after a football game. Then the boy's father suddenly died unexpectedly after the funeral the boy asked if he could play in the game on saturday he said he wanted to play for his father the coach decided that he would start the boy and then he would take him out after a few minutes and replace him with a regular but to his surprise and to the surprise of everyone the boy played the entire game he played every every down that he was in there was inspired he played for 60 minutes. After the game, the coach sought him out and asked, what got into you out there today? The boy replied, he said, do you remember how my father and I used to go around the campus arm in arm? He didn't want anyone to know that he was totally blind. This afternoon is the first time he ever saw me play football. I don't know if this is what happens after we die but it sure is a nice thought. I, don't, I do know that when we come to know uh, Jesus for the first time, our eyes are opened so that we begin to see things as they really are, as they really are, and not what we're told to, uh, told by so-called experts or, or the news media or even some uh, so-called biblical scholars. I think that when we finally get home to, to Jesus, our eyes will be opened even more. Um, this is such a good life, uh, living in Jesus, in this world, and I just don't understand. I don't understand why anyone would not want to know him. Now, keep this good thought in mind as we move to the passage where Jesus tells us that he will bring fire on the earth. What in the world is going on here? Jesus, uh, is Jesus coming to bring fire? I want to, you to understand, and, I, and I'm, just, I'm just a regular person like everyone else here uh, today. I had to go and look up and, and see several versions of the Bible, and they all say the same thing. He came to bring fire. Uh, as a last resort, uh, I went uh, to the commentaries and uh, to find some meaning here, and I finally found some cooling water for my warm tongue. I finally found a meaning, a little meaning here. The text reads, right, the, that Jesus did come to bring fire, but we have to know what this fire meant in their language. The fire that he brings is the one where his word will spread like fire. 
And he wishes that it was already done because he wants uh, uh, to be with all of us. He wants to be with all of us. Also, this fire denotes judgment. Uh, this is for all the people who don't get it. Okay, and there will be many of them. Maybe there's even some listening here today. Jesus is constantly seeking you. He's seeking you, but it's your free choice uh, uh, as, to, uh, as to how you're going to respond by accepting or rejecting him. Remember, there's no in-between. The fire that is spreading is God's, uh, is, is God's word. This, this is the fire that's spreading. It's the fire of God's word and it's spread throughout the Roman Empire with Paul leading the way. Remember? It is a fire that's spreading all over Africa today. It's, it's the fire that's spreading in China as we speak. It's the fire that's being doused in this country, doused in this country by a bunch of people who want to be politically correct. We have a very serious crisis in our country, and we, and we are not dealing with it very well. Jesus also takes uh, talks of baptism uh, that he must go through. Remember, uh, being plunged in water uh, is a sign of distress and suffering. Uh, we get so caught up in the word baptism that we sometimes get a little weird about it. You know what I mean? How many people tell us that it has to be, baptism has to be a certain way? right or, or you have to use special water right or, or you have to say certain words uh, uh, to someone who's a, a certain age baptism means going through hardship and coming out the other side jesus was going to have to go to the cross and die but he knew that he would be coming out the other side as a totally changed being he he would cease to be so much of a physical being and become a spiritual being does this mean that our baptisms don't mean anything according to this reading of course not they mean a lot when you come to the baptismal font you come as a sinner sinners the water symbolizes the washing away of sins and be the beginning of your new walk with jesus you are commanded to do this but that doesn't necessarily mean that you will have jesus in your heart when you do this sometime in your life uh, you you come to the point okay uh, you come to the uh, point where you're at the foot of the cross and you confess your sins to Jesus and ask him to be your Lord and Savior and ask him to live inside of you. And when you get up from that cross, you are a changed being. In the first instance, we have baptism uh, by water. And in the second instance, we have baptism by the Holy Spirit. Baptism basically means change uh, somehow somehow you are changed many of you know this because you have been changed uh, it really can't be explained it must be experienced it, it is a great and truly wonderful experience but also notice that jesus is distressed by having to do this he doesn't want to go to the cross we like to think that we first hear this at gethsemane but it's not here we have it long before uh, the, the prayers in the, the, in the garden. Once again, we see the human side of Jesus, as I don't think that anyone would want to deliberately go to the cross. Now, I'm going to startle you here once again. We just talked about Jesus bringing the fire or the word. Then he asked, do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division whatever happened to the title uh, prince of peace uh, this part can be a very long story but in the end jesus is indeed the prince of peace and don't ever forget that when we first what we first have to remember is who jesus is talking to at this time he is talking to his disciples and others who just might happen to be listening these people have lived under the oppressive rule of the romans all their lives this was not easy as the romans demanded total allegiance to the emperor they demanded very high taxes from everyone and they expected people to obey them in all things the disciples and others at this time were thinking that jesus was indeed the messiah who would free them from this terrible regime it's kind of like what's going on today but we all know that it isn't what jesus was 
or is taught or, or is all about. Even here, it can be confusing to the literal reader. He, he, we have been talking about fire and no peace. Uh, let me remind you of what it's like to be in the process of knowing, uh, uh, not knowing Jesus, to to the pro to coming to know Him. Remember now that I have. I remember that, that I have peace, and many of you have this peace also, but how did we get this way? First of all, before we know Jesus, we know that God's grace is everywhere. There is no place in the world that we can go, that you can go, where there isn't God around in some form. John Wesley called this prevenient grace. It's everywhere. It's all over. As we wander over the world, uh, uh, before we know Jesus, God is working on us through this grace, prevenient grace. All the time, God is working on us. Many people, and maybe most people, flat out reject God, but God keeps on working anyway. You will not find peace until you accept Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior. There is no peace there's no peace for those who don't know Jesus, period. None. If, you, uh, if they tell you that there is, it is because they don't know what real peace is in the first place. I would like you to test this a little bit. Uh, as you go about your week this week, try to watch, well, I hate to tell you this, but try to watch one of the national news broadcasts and look into the eyes and faces of the people who are demonstrating for this or against that or whatever. Look into the eyes of the people who want to change our way of life in this country to that which is not compatible with the teachings of Jesus. You will find, you will not find any peace in those people who are against Jesus and the Bible. I, I, I don't care if it's politically incorrect to say such things, it's the truth. There is no peace there. They have no peace. After we find this peace by coming to know Jesus, uh, then our fa families may turn against us if they don't know Jesus. Uh, at this time, Jesus uh, may use us as a tool to help our families to get to know him. And this it process uh, may go back to the place where, where many will, will, will uh, turn against uh, Jesus in that area. But Jesus will keep on working. He will not stop. And he'll keep on working um, through you to try to bring peace to everyone. The bottom line here is that Jesus loves you so much that he will risk uh, broken families, broken family relations in order that we all come to know him and his great peace. Too many people stop at this point because they, uh, their families are more important than Jesus. You have to remember that Jesus is always first, always first and foremost in everything. And he only wants what is the very best for you. And the best is that sometimes it's hard on us as Jesus uses his best tactics to keep our families from going to the wrong place. Life is not easy following Jesus because sometimes it hurts. It hurts because our family members won't hear the words of Jesus. Now, Jesus has been telling the people all about these, that these things will happen, and they, including the disciples, don't really have a clue, okay? Uh, these followers could, be, they could forecast the weather with accuracy, but they couldn't see what Jesus was talking about in his teachings. They could understand the physical world, but they couldn't make sense out of the spiritual world, even after Jesus had given them detailed instructions. They didn't get it. I remember my dad, uh, when he would do a little weather forecasting, he uh, had an old barometer and, and some common sense. That's what he had. I would guess that he could predict uh, most weather better than any many meteorologists today. Uh, he could at least forecast tomorrow's weather as well as any current weatherman. Uh, he couldn't predict things like hail or tornadoes or those types of things, but he general, generally speaking, he was pretty good. I'm sure that you've all known people like that, uh, like this, and maybe we have people like that listening today. We also have scientists who can do all sorts of things. We have doctors who can treat lots of different diseases with success. We have all these kinds of things going on in this wonderful world, and all these people can be proud 
of what they do. Even with all our science and knowledge, we still have many, many people who choose to ignore any or all parts of the spiritual world. It worries me, it makes me sad that we have so many people right in our midst who continue to turn their back on Jesus. If there's anyone here today who really can't make up their minds, I would like to say this, okay? Yes, the Bible was written by men, but they were inspired by the Holy Spirit in every word they wrote. Uh, in my 73 years, I have seen lots of things, but the only thing that I can rely on for the truth is the Bible. Jesus went to that cross in a most dreadful fashion and died an agonizing death so that you might be free from all your sin debts. He did this and then he was raised up again from the dead so that you can have the hope of eternal life. It's all so simple, so simple, so easy for everyone who wants hope, the courage, and the fortitude that comes with knowing Jesus. In this world, we get to live our lives as we please, and the best way and the happiest way is with Jesus. No doubt about it. He is always there for you. We live out here on the prairie, and, and there, there, there's something about fire that we should all learn at a very young age. If you don't know this, and listen up for a second, we don't have to go very far out of our doors to get into the rangeland, and, and, and this could save your life. If there's a wildfire that's coming down on you, or your place, uh, the best way and sometimes the only way to stop that is to build what they call a back fire. This means that you purposely build a fire, start a fire around you and your buildings so that everything is burnt up. In this way, when, when the wildfire comes upon you, there's no more fuel for it and it'll either have to go out or go around you. Back in the old days, uh, when there was always a threat of wildfire, this would be basic life-saving action. When we come to Judgment Day, the world is going to be destroyed by fire or worse, and it will be a total disaster. Uh, there will be no place where it will be safe. However, God has given you a backfire in the person of Jesus Christ. This is the place where you'll be able to stand and you'll be safe from the wrath that God pours out. Even though we are all sinners and fall short of the glory of God, He has provided Jesus to you to, to help you to be saved from this. That is because He loves you. He loves you and He loves you and He wants you to join us, join Him and everyone else in a place that's every bit as nice as the Garden of Eden was for Adam and Eve. All you have been given, all this gift, this, all these gifts, you've been given the gift of faith so that all the evil in the world will pass you by on their way to oblivion. You know that is a lot of love, and you don't, and and and, and you get. To, it's it's a lot of love that you get. You just no way around it, and and you don't deserve a bit of it, not a bit. Uh, but that is the kind of God that you have uh, and serve. He is so generous. He's so kind. His people uh, uh, often they makes makes us all wonder why because he so does all this stuff. Well, you don't have to know why. It just is. It just is. Someday we will know why. The love that Jesus has for you will never end. And that's a promise. A promise. And thank you, Jesus, for first loving us. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for all that you do, Lord. There's just, it just goes on and on, the, the, the goodness you have for us, Lord. And we just help us to take this and, and uh, to spread it around like fire. We need fire today, too, the fire you're talking about. Help us to spread this like fire to everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes our worship for this week. I thank you for joining us. And now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. As you go out into this wonderful, wonderful world that he made just for you, spreading his word. Go in God's peace. And amen. <laughs>